Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Spencer attempted to dissuade Esme from moving out of Laura and Kevin's penthouse with Ace at the Invader business. Esme expressed her need for her and Ace to get away from Spencer, pointing out that it was not necessary for them to be romantically involved for Spencer to show his commitment to Ace. What kind of commitment was Spencer willing to make? Esme inquired. Spencer volunteered to share parenting duties and provide financial support for Esme. Esme stated that by living with Laura and Kevin, she was putting her life on hold and that she was desperate to begin her life over. Esme promised Ace and herself that she would act in their best interests before exiting the room. Spencer then gave someone a call. Grab it. Take up. Call me, please. I require you. The situation has gotten worse, Spencer stated in a voicemail. Trina confided in Ava about her altercation with Spencer at the Jerome Gallery. Trina acknowledged that she hadn't seen Spencer since the altercation. It startled Ava that Spencer had thought Trina would accept an ultimatum. Trina remembered expressing her feelings about not being given priority in Spencer's life. When it came to how much time Spencer had spent with Esme and Ace, Ava stated Trina had been more than kind. Is it incorrect of Trina to think that Spencer was overly devoted to Ace? Trina remarked that throughout their time in New York City, she and Spencer had become closer than before. Trina continued, saying she thought Spencer and her were doomed to fail. Ava expressed her continued belief in the possibility of happy endings. And Trina, you are just at the beginning, Ava replied. Spencer sent Trina a text just at that moment. Trina stated that she was sick of fighting and that she didn't want to speak with Spencer. Trina said, And I'm not caving in to his ultimatum. If Trina had told Spencer what Trina had just told Ava, Ava wanted to know. Ava questioned whether Trina still loved Spencer after Trina acknowledged that she hadn't. Yes, Trina replied with a smile. Trina was urged by Ava to express her viewpoint to Spencer. Oh, my dear. Join him in a chair. Speak with him, be composed, and avoid assigning blame. Simply express to him your feelings and the reasons behind them. And after that, pay attention to him and show consideration for his feelings. Ava advised Trina. After Trina thanked Ava, they embraced. I knew you would tell me the right thing, even if it was hard for me to hear, Trina said. What exactly are friends for? Perhaps you should respond to Spencer's text message now. Trina reached for her phone, but not before Ava inquired. Carly insisted on knowing why Nina had offered to sell her half of Metro Court back to her at Sunny's penthouse. Sunny claimed not to know and appeared unconcerned about it. Carly sighed, promising to find out why Nina did what she did. Carly stated that Kelly's was a better fit for her and that she wasn't sure if she wanted to buy back her share of Metro Court. The subject turned to Cyrus. Carly saw that Sonny was on his own now without Jason to keep him safe. Carly was told not to worry about it by Sonny. Sonny told Carly as she was leaving to consider taking Nina up on her offer. Valentin and Nina met with Laura at Valentin's residence to discuss Charlotte. Laura suggested that she and Valentin have a private meeting when she came in. Valentin gave Nina an explanation for staying. Laura then informed Nana and Valentin that Charlotte had been persuaded by Victor that Anna posed a threat. Valentin went upstairs to look through Charlotte's room after Laura mentioned the letter Victor had written to her. A book caught Valentin's eye on a shelf. Valentin discovered Victor's letter and a deck of tarot cards when he opened the book. Laura read the letter out loud when Valentin came back downstairs. Victor, according to Valentin, has discovered the perfect revenge. Laura mentioned that Charlotte thought Anna had shot her on purpose because of Victor. She believes that Anna wanted to kill her, and she wants Anna arrested for it, Laura continued. When Dante inquired about Mason in Austin's hospital office, Austin was reticent. Dan pointed out that treating patients who are not your own for injuries resulting from criminal activity is against the law. Dante also mentioned the possibility of Austin being charged later on as an accessory. 
As Dante brought up Ava's abduction, Austin immediately blurted out that he had been the one to save her from Mason. In an attempt to retract the statement, Austin stated that he was alluding to the night, nine months prior, when Heather and Ryan attempted to harm Ava and Felicia at Windermere. Dant questioned Austin over his private relationship with Ava. Austin mentioned incoherently that he was close to Ava. Austin shifted Mason's responsibility for Ava's abduction. Mason had merely been carrying out orders, Dandy claimed, and he gave Austin the order to find Mason's employer so Austin could escape. Mason was told by Cyrus in Mason's hospital room to claim that Mason had taken Ava's life on his own. Mason claimed that trying to kill Ava was his only option. Cyrus remembered that he threatened to expose Mason's betrayal. Mason offered to make a deal with the authorities in exchange for Austin's surrender. Cyrus expressed his desire to keep Austin out of the picture. Mason would be well protected in Pentonville, Cyrus added. And who can say? If you follow instructions to the letter, you may be eligible for release far sooner than you might expect, Cyrus stated. A nurse gave Austin a post-it note that someone had left a little while later. Avoid being stupid, the note said. It can be fatal. Austin noticed Cyrus smiling close by when he looked up. Cyrus gave Austin a wink and got into the elevator. Terry informed Finn that the wife of a deceased patient was suing him and the hospital for malpractice while they were both at the hospital. Terry stated that Finn will be led to continue practicing at the hospital albeit with limitations. Terry advised Finn to get legal counsel. Terry and Portia talked about Finn's goodness as a doctor and as a person for the remainder of their shift. Terry expressed her hope that the hospital wouldn't be taken down by the litigation. Finn mentioned the case to Elizabeth near the nurse's station. Elizabeth reassured Finn that he had done nothing wrong while holding his hand. According to General Hospital Spoilers, T.J. Ashford and Molly Lansing Davis recently learned the heartbreaking news that their surrogate had lost their baby. Trina Robinson and Spencer Cassidane just called it quits. Naturally, Spencer and Trina have also recently developed a close relationship. Is Trina going to get pregnant and give her baby to T.J. and Molly to raise? According to General Hospital Spoilers, Spencer is more worried about Esme Prince and her son than he is about Trina and their bond. Since Spencer doesn't think Trina should be his first priority, she may easily find out she is pregnant and opt to handle things alone now that they have broken up. To avoid having to face Spencer in person, Trina may easily transfer schools or do something else. Naturally, since Portia Robinson, Brooke Kerr, and Curtis Ashford, Donald Turner, were married, Trina and TJ have grown quite close. Trina is undoubtedly aware of TJ and Molly's intense desire for a child. Could Trina beg for her child to be adopted? Since TJ and Molly are aware that Trina isn't ready to be a parent, they would definitely think about adopting Trina's child. Being a single parent is not something Trina has planned for the future. Trina is aware that TJ and Molly would be wonderful parents as well. Trina might make an effort to inform Spencer about the baby, but she might possibly feel he doesn't need to know. Trina can feel betrayed that she isn't given priority and that her child shouldn't either. Spencer does, after all, share a family with Esmond and his younger brother. Even with Spencer's child, Trina could think she would never be the one to take precedence. Maybe TJ and Molly deserve her baby more than Spencer ever will. Spencer might make an attempt to persuade Trina to keep the child if he learns the truth, but Spencer has demonstrated that his word is meaningless. Trina could refuse to back down and convince him that she is okay with her child being adopted. She could even use guilt to get him to change his mind after all the times he has rejected her. Will Trina get her way and Spencer back off? Although Trina is in love with Spencer, she is aware that their relationship is not meaningful it could be necessary for Trina to move on from Spencer and go on with her life. Is it now appropriate for Trina to let go of her losses in Mulan? Is Trina supposed to let TJ and Molly raise this child and help her get her life back on track? Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.